conclude, Deputy Collins, please. Um, thank, thanks very much, Keon Corla. Um, I would like to thank all the speakers and all the parties for their contribution to this debate here today. Um, I also want to thank um, many of the NGOs who have played a hugely important role in informing all of us and in advocating um, on behalf of people who are affected in occupied territories and impacted negatively in their lives. And that's Trocra and Christian Aid, the Irish Congress of Trade Unions, um, Sadaka, who have done huge work in relation to this, um, also the NGOs in uh, the Middle East, whom we um, had the benefit of their insight and their advice, Al Haq and Breaking of the Silence, and also to give specific mention to uh, a fabulous Irish human rights activist, Dr. Susan Power, uh, who works with Al Haq, who is very much into the forefront in uh, helping to advance this legislation. And needless to say, Senator Francis Black, who has uh, single handedly spearheaded this legislation uh, through the Shannon. I think, Minister, it has all been laid out uh, quite clearly for you. This bill is being supported because it is the right thing to do. It is uh, people standing up to, for the rights to uphold um, international law. Why should we turn a blind eye to blatant and flagrant uh, breaches and abuses of international law because of um, an agenda by some others which we don't agree with? We need to do the right thing here, and that is what that legislation simply sets out to do. It sets out to challenge the status quo, because the status quo at the moment is saying that it is okay for a country to go in and occupy illegally uh, other people's territories, and to profit, uh, and to make a livelihood, and to trade, um, and to benefit from occupying those areas to the detriment of the people who rightfully own those territories. And that is what we have to do. We have to stand up and call it out and say that it is wrong. And if there are challenges in relation to EU law, well then we need to test it and we need to change it if necessary. And you've made a big play in relation to your, your legal opinion, the Attorney General. And there's plenty of alternative advice out there which is available. And we'd love to see years, but you won't publish it. You could maybe publish a summary in relation to it. And the three uh, premises upon which you are uh, uh, opposing the legislation just don't stack up because the public policy uh, exemption which is available cites uh, morality, it cites security, it cites protection of human health and of human life. And all of that is at the centre of the contributions of everybody here today. And, you know, the political... Um, objections that you raise, that we would somehow be out of step and become an outlier in Europe. Well, I'd like to be an outlier for the right reasons. We have plenty of outliers, uh, particularly in Eastern Europe and the far side of Europe, who are outliers for the wrong reasons, um, advancing far-right agendas which are offensive to, for example, the LGBT communities and seek to shut down democracy and the freedom of speech uh, and the proper openness and transparency that, that's required for our democracies. So, I'm happy to be an outlier um, on this reason, uh, on this issue, and I think Ireland should take the stand like we did in 1987. We were an outlier then, but I'd remind you that successive Attorney Generals back then, uh, when it moved, when the, when the Attorney General uh, Peter Sutherland vacated and John Rogers came in, the, the legal advice of the then government changed and the government was able to support the ban on the importation of uh, product and produce from uh, South Africa, and rightly so. And look at the impact that that has made and how, how that changed apartheid and led to a pathway. So I think we should uh, be brave enough and bold enough to learn from the experiences of the past and believe in ourselves that we can bring others with us in relation to it. And you know, I don't agree with the practical effects either. Uh, and we need to challenge two things in particular. First of all, this uh, outrage and offence which has been built up by Israel that we're somehow anti-Semitic. We're not, and I've outlined in my speech uh, how we recognise the state of Israel and we will trade with them. But they are on the offside line in terms of the occupied territories. But we need to challenge corporate America also. This idea that we're now being offensive to corporate America. We all value the jobs, the foreign direct investment jobs that are in here. But if you look at the head or one of the leading persons in Facebook who came to announce a thousand jobs here recently this week, 
One of the first things she did as her speech was a hands up that Facebook need to do a lot more uh, to clean up their own act in terms of uh, electoral interference, people's privacy rights and all the rest. And if you look at Airbnb, they have taken a particularly strong stance. They won't list any properties which are available for letting in occupied territories. So whilst we value the jobs that corporate America brings, you know, they have to clean up their act in terms of corporate responsibility, morality and social responsibility in many regards. So we can't give them a, a free pass on everything because they're, they're just simply uh, providing us with jobs. So Minister, I would conclude by saying that the legislation has popular support, not populist support, but popular support for the right reasons, given our history, uh, given our experience and given all that has been outlined here today, we intend to pursue uh, right through committee stage and beyond uh, and challenge the issues of how you intend to try and block this with the flagrant abuse of the money message system. And I just want to give two quick examples if you'll allow me, Chair. We've had recent legislation passed through this House, the public health uh, bill in relation to alcohol, the sale of alcohol and also the criminal justice uh, sexual offences bill, which put new uh, criminal offences on our statute books. There was no issues right, with money messages you, then. No. And this legislation will uh, ask our guardian and our customs service to have an expanded role, like they have under the Criminal Justice Sexual Offences Bill, like they have under the Public Health Alcohol Bill. And there's no issues with money messages. So this issue about a money message just does not simply stack up. It's about doing the right thing at the right time and taking the lead. Thank and I think deputy. we should proceed and do it. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Carl.